Hi, this is James from KnowThen.com. In this screencast, we're going to learn how to write middleware, the foundational building block in KoaJS as well as ExpressJS. We'll go beyond the trivial example in the last episode and build a functioning session management middleware. At first, our session middleware will be memory-based. Then we'll refactor it to use RethinkDB, a relatively new open source database that we'll use to store our session information. Just to get everybody on the same page, let's first define exactly what I mean by session. If you're already comfortable with what a session is, you may want to fast forward a minute or two to skip this introduction. Probably the most common example of using a session is related to user authentication. In other words, when somebody registers and logs into your website, your site will need to be able to keep track of that logged in user. Sessions are the most common way of keeping track of that logged in user. An example flow of how sessions would work would be something like this. A new client application, typically a web browser, visits your website for the first time and registers as a new user in your web application. Now the server does a few things when the user submits their registration information. In a nutshell, it creates a new user account in a database, it creates a session token, which is just an unguessable complex string. Then it stores that token somewhere on the server. Typically, it would be in a very fast cached data store, such as Redis. However, in our case, we're going to use RethinkDB. Next, the token is sent back to the client in the form of a cookie. Now, on subsequent requests from the client, the cookie will be sent to the server, at which point the server can grab the token, look up the stored information based on the token, and respond to the client with the appropriate context of who's making the request. In other words, if subsequent requests are for potentially restricted information, our server can quickly know who's making the request and do the appropriate checks to see if this person is allowed to see that information. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to start the implementation of our middleware with some testing, as it will help us design a reasonably good interface to our middleware. First, I'll create a test.js file and put a few modules in that I typically use for testing. But before that, I need to install them, so I'll use npm to install them. I'll be using Mocha as the test framework, along with SuperTest. To start, I'm going to create a KoaJS app in my test. Now, if you recall from my session workflow explanation, we're going to need to use cookies. And for security, we want to go ahead and sign those cookies by the server. To have the cookies signed, we'll need to supply KoaJS with the secret key. So I'll assign a secret string as an element of the array passed to the app.keys attribute. Next, I'll add our middleware, which doesn't actually exist yet, by passing it to the use method. And lastly, we'll be adding a responding middleware. Now let's think about how we might want to interact with our server. First off, our session should probably be an object that I can assign arbitrary values to. So I should be able to do something like this. And on subsequent requests, I should be able to access this session by referring to this.session.username. And then when the user logs off, I should be able to destroy the session. I have a couple of options for destroying the session. I could attach a method to the session, such as this.session.destroy, or I could simply set the session to null I kind of like setting the session to null, so we'll go with that. Okay, that really seems pretty straightforward. So in a nutshell, there's an object on the request context, the this keyword, called session, which I can assign values to. The session middleware will persist the values I assign across requests. And lastly, when I assign null to the session, the middleware should remove the session. We're going to write a few tests up front to test those basic functions I just described. I'm going to add a switch statement in my test koajs app, which is testing the URL. The first case will be when the URL matches forward slash set name. When this request is received, I will save my username to the session username attribute, and I will respond with the username. One more thing, we'll create a server variable and assign the server return from calling app.listen. So now we have a condition we can test. So let's write our first test. To write our test, we'll call the describe function passing in a description and a function. Now I'm going to create an agent variable within the scope of our describe function, which will represent a client which receives and passes cookies back to the server on subsequent requests. Next, I'll do a little bit of setup by creating the agent in the before hook. For the first test, I'll call the it function passing in the test description and a generator function. 
Now for my test, I'm going to have the agent make a request to the set name URL. Then I'll call the expect method with a 200 for the expected status code. And I'll call end. To run this test, I'll key mocha with the harmony flag on the command line. And of course, I expect this test to fail as I haven't even created the middleware yet. So it fails as expected. Now let's create our session file and set up the boilerplate code for middleware, which is basically a regular function that takes an option parameter, then returns a generator function with one parameter that I will label next. All non-returning middleware must yield flow to downstream middleware by calling yield next. Okay, let's run our test again. It still fails, but it's a different error now. We can see the error message is complaining about us trying to assign a value to a property of an undefined. Let's go ahead and add the session object to our request context by setting this.session to an empty object. Now let's test again. Okay, we're passing the first test. Even though we know things aren't really functional yet, let's move on to our next test. In the next test, I want to check to see if the username is maintained across requests. As part of the setup, I will add a new case in the switch statement that will respond with the session value for the username when the requested URL is forward slash get name. Then I'll set up the agent and establish the session's username in the before hook by making the get request to the URL forward slash set name. And in the actual test, I will make a get request to the URL forward slash get name and test the result, which I expect to be James as I've hard coded above. Okay, let's run the test. And it fails as expected since we haven't actually implemented this feature yet. Let's try and implement it in the easiest way possible, storing the session in memory for now. To do this, I'm going to add a store variable scoped to the normal function in our middleware. Next, I'll check to see if a token is getting passed to our cookie. To do this, I need a standard cookie name that I can reference when retrieving and saving cookies. I'm going to create a variable called cookie name and assign it the value of coa.sid. Now I'm going to pass my cookie name variable into the cookies get method and try to retrieve the token. Now if the token was sent and it's a key in the store object, I'll pull the value out of the store and assign it as the session object. To check if the token is in the store object, I'm going to install Lodash, a nice Node.js utility library, and use the has function to check if it exists. Now I'll go ahead and assign the stored value to this.session. Now if the session is null, I'm going to assign an empty object. Now I'll go ahead and yield to downstream generators. After flow has returned to our middleware, we need to do a few things. If there wasn't a token as part of the request, then I'll generate a new token. I'm going to use the UID safe module, which will generate an appropriate token for us to use. Then I'll assign this token to the cookie. There are a few options I should pass to the cookie, such as max age of the cookie, signing, etc. I'm going to create a variable to store the cookie options right below the store variable. And then I'm going to pass it into the set method. And lastly, if the session exists, then I'll add the session to the store variable. Okay, let's run our test again and see if it passes. Cool, it passes. I'm going to add a third case to the switch statement that will set the session to null and set the HTTP status to 204. Now I'll do some setup for the test, setting the agent and establishing the session name. Okay, in the test, I will first check to see that the username is saved in the session. Then I'll make a delete call to the URL forward slash clear, which should destroy the session. And finally, I'll make a second check to see that the username does not exist. Okay, running the test and it fails. Let's fix that. If there's no session, then I'll delete the property from the store variable. Then we'll run our test again and it passes.
At this point, we have a working, though rudimentary, implementation of a session management middleware using memory. There are several problems with this approach. For one thing, if we have multiple node servers, each of them would only have access to their own memory, so it isn't shared. What happens if the node server dies? Well, your sessions are lost. And there's a several other reasons that memory storage is not a great idea. So let's add some persistence to our session storage. All right, we're about to get to the fun part, for me anyway, where I get to play with something new, rethink DB. But before we do that, I'm going to refactor some code to tidy things up. I want to move the session loading and saving logic into their own respective functions. I'll create one function called load session and move all the appropriate code before the yield statement into it. And we'll do a similar thing after the yield statement, moving all the logic into its own save session function. Okay, I need to relabel this to the past parameter, ctx, or context. And I need to return the token. I need to change this to ctx in the save session function also. Now I need to call the two new functions in the session function. Okay, I'll rerun our tests. Nothing seems to have broken. Let's take a brief look at RethinkDB. RethinkDB is an open source distributed database built to store JSON documents. It offers a simple programming model, easy administration, and excellent scalability. Getting started with RethinkDB is pretty easy. You can download and run the installer, and then run the RethinkDB command to start the server. Let me show you a few examples using RethinkDB's super cool admin web interface. First, I'm going to create a new database by calling the dbCreate method and passing in a name. Next, I'll create a table by calling the tableCreate method and passing in the name. Now I'll insert some data by calling the insert method a couple of times. Queries are simple. Here's a query for all the records in the items table. And here's a query looking for a specific record in a particular column. If you know the primary key, you can find just that record with the following query. And lastly, deleting data is pretty simple. Okay, so I've barely scratched the surface on what RethinkDB can do, but what I have covered is just about enough to implement our persistent session store. I'm going to implement our storage model in a file called sessionmodel.js. Now, RethinkDB offers a module named, well, you probably guessed it, RethinkDB. However, I'm going to use a different module that adds a few other things on top of the RethinkDB module called RethinkDB Dash. First, I'll install RethinkDB Dash using npm. Then I'll pull the module into my file. I'm going to go ahead and wire up the basic functions we'll need. Add, find by token, update, remove, your basic CRUD operations. There's one more function I'm going to add called try migrate. This will be called when we start our server up and it will attempt to create the database, the table, and add the index to our token field. Next, I'm going to add a few constants for the database name, table name, and token field name. Now I need to instantiate my RethinkDB dash object. So I'll create the database, then the table, and lastly, I create the index for the token field. I've wrapped these in a try catch block as it will throw errors on subsequent attempts because the table, the database have already been created. A quick disclaimer, I don't really like this approach, but we'll make do for now. Let's implement the add function. I'm going to assign the token to the appropriate field. Then I'll call the insert method and run the query. Okay, find by token is pretty easy as well. First, I'll create a few variables, filter, session, and result. Next, I'll assign an empty object to the filter. Then I'll set up the filter to look up the token. 
Now I'll query for the record by passing my filter into the filter method. Then we'll call run. If the result is an array with a length of one, we'll pull that value out of the array and return it. Now for our update function. First I'll create a filter variable. Next I'll set the sessions token value to the past token. Then I'll set up the filter by assigning the token. Then I'll run our update. The last thing we need to do is implement our remove method. Like before, I'll create a filter variable and set up the filter, and then I'll run our filter and delete the results. All right, we have our model created. Now we just need to pull it into our session middleware and use it. So instead of assigning this session to the store variable, the in-memory solution, we can just put it in the database now. Let's start with the changes we need to make in the save session function. Now I'll just get rid of the assignment to the store variable. I'm going to add a variable called isNew and initially set it to false. Then if the token isn't passed, I will set isNew to true and that's how we'll know if we need to do an insert or update. Okay, if the session was set to null, we need to call delete, another simple substitution. Now let's use our model to find the session, which is a simple swapping of one line of code. One final thing, I'm going to create a variable called isMigrated in the regular function scope. The first time the middleware is called, the migration will be attempted, and on subsequent calls, the migration will be ignored. Now let's run our test again. Oh, I failed to bring in my model. That's not going to work. Let's add that. Uh, we're getting another error. Let's see. Oh, I need to yield this. Let's run our test again. They passed. Sweet. That concludes this screencast. Hopefully you found it helpful. A few parting words. Don't use this middleware. This was really a training exercise. We left off a lot of required features, and it could be significantly optimized, and the testing is inadequate, so it's nowhere near production ready. Use one of the existing modules for this. And lastly, please consider joining my mailing list so I can let you know when new screencasts are available as well as provide other valuable information. Thank you. Goodbye.